Red is the most potent colour in human history. It's loud, hot and passionate, the colour of love and blood, life and death. Now it was probably the first colour we ever used in art and it grabs our attention like no other. No wonder so many self-important people in paintings are wearing red. It's the ultimate status symbol. Now here's a great example. This is Jan van Eyck's self-portrait. And what really captures my attention is this frankly absurd red turban he's wearing. Now Van Eyck's red turban was made from a dye called Kermes. Now that was the greatest red available to the Middle Ages and by far the most expensive. But what Van Eyck didn't realise is within only a few years, a new red would arrive in Europe. It would blow Kermes out of the water and it would become the greatest red in the history of art. And its name was Cochineal. For centuries, Oaxaca in southern Mexico has been the centre of cochineal production. And the raw materials are rather strange. Dactylopius coccus, a parasitic insect that feeds on the leaves of the nopal cactus. Here at Rancho La Nopalera, Manuel Fernandez still harvests these beauties in the traditional way. Wow, this is incredible. <laughs> Yes, it's, a, it's on the greenhouse and where I cultivate the cochineal. Are these the insects here, these white things? Yes. The color of cochineal is not the blood. When the cochineal absorbs the juice of the nopal, in inside the body, metabolize and transform it in a red solution. Right. This solution, in the chemical name, it's carminic acid. Okay. This is the reason to the color. You need 140,000 females weight one kilo. 140,000 <laughs> of these <laughs> weigh one kilo. Three. So how do you collect these from the leaf? I use the <laughs> brush. <laughs> I oh, they come off easily, don't they? They just fall off. Manuel, they're very elegant movements. You're obviously <laughs> highly experienced in doing yes. this. <laughs> it's <a> per experience. <laughs> Poor things. They don't know what's awaiting them. Manuel dries his collected cochineal in the sunshine for a week and then grinds them into a fine powder. The idea is not to see any, any white. <laughs> right. <laughs> no? God, Manuel, I'm exhausted just watching you grind. But look at the difference here. That's, a, that's such a crazy difference, isn't there, between... The colour of cochineo is magic. <laughs> <laughs> it's magic. The tribes of ancient Mexico first realised cochineal's magical qualities more than 2,000 years ago. Now, I'm on my way to an important archaeological site and I've got special access to go in on my own today so I'm extremely excited and the reason I want to go is it's filled with ancient cochineal. Tomb number five at Wihasso is around 1250 years old. It's one of the most elaborately decorated tombs in all of Mexico. Walls of Tomb 5 are painted with Zapotec red, a mixture of cochineal with the minerals hematite and cinnabar. 
It's a shimmering backdrop, and under ancient candlelight it made these fierce warrior figures appear almost three-dimensional. This is a really special place. the indigenous people of Mexico, cochineal had a spiritual significance. But it was also a commodity and a symbol of status and power. So this is a copy of a page from the Codex Mendoza. It's a very important manuscript dating back to the 1520s, 1530s. And it is essentially a gift list because each of these images depict a present that the Aztec people had to give their emperor Montezuma as a display of their loyalty. So what have we got? Well, we've got gold, there's feathers, uh, there are capes and outfits, there's jade jewellery, he loved jade jewellery, and down here, two bags filled with red dots. Now those are cochineal, and if you read the key very closely at the top, it reveals that this one town here in Oaxaca had to give the Emperor Montezuma 40 sacks of cochineal every single year. Now that is a lot of insects. But Montezuma wouldn't keep his precious cochineal for long. In the 1520s, the Spanish conquered Mexico and took control of his red gold. They shipped it back to Europe, and when it arrived, it caused a sensation. European painters fell in love with cochineal. Veronese used it in this beautiful red curtain. The clothes of Van Dyck's Balbi children owe it their richness. And Velázquez, in his Immaculate Conception, used it on the robes of the Virgin Mary. And there are artists today equally transfixed by this infectious red Oaxacan painter Edgar Yehir works with a palette of entirely natural colors. Uso pigmentos de origen animal, vegetal y de origen mineral, ¿no? Aquí tenemos carbón. This is carbon. Carbon, carbon black, yeah. Cúrcuma. Cúrcuma. Es vegetal. That's a beautiful color. Vegetable. <laughs> sí. Y tenemos la grana cochinilla. Aha. Es un pigmento super hermoso. So what is special about this pigment? Es un pigmento para mí ancestral y es el resultado de un trabajo de muchas generaciones. Es un producto mexicano que me me da esta conexión con mis ancestros. Ven, vamos, te voy a mostrar. Okay, vamos. This is a natural pigment and it looks synthetic, it sort of zings and glows like something that's been made through chemicals, but actually it's entirely natural, it's come out of the earth itself. Es un color hermoso, es un rojo maravilloso que te da la sensación de que estás pintando realmente con, con una sangre muy pura, ¿no? muy noble. Es, es algo es único en el mundo. The story of cochineal is an exotic one, and at first it might seem like it's got nothing to do with our lives today. But believe it or not, it does. Let me show you something. Lipstick. Jelly strawberry flavored cakes. Now all of these products and many others are dyed red with cochineal. So the next time you put on your lipstick, 
or admire the glorious reds in a great European painting. Just think of that little Latin parasite.